Hello uh, and welcome. I'm just going to go through this topic of judicial independence in the United Kingdom. It's a key topic on your AS2 uh, British political uh, system. And we're going to see exactly why it's important. Well, you know that there are three branches. There's judicial, you've got legislative and you've got executive in any government system. It's a judiciary's role within the United Kingdom to protect the citizens through interpreting and upholding the laws it stands. Their role is to hold the government and any other public body accountable uh, within the law. Okay, They also have to ensure uh, the effectiveness in interpreting the law fairly. Uh, this is crucial in maintaining their independence as well too. It's regarded as essential that there was a strict separation of powers between the judiciary and other branches. And you can see this in the newly established Supreme Court. It's also regarded as essential that judges should be able to take decisions without political interference. How can the judiciary, for example, possibly act as a constraint to government if the executive or parliament can influence its uh, judicial decisions? One of the key things you need to know then in terms of legislation is one you already do know. It's the Constitutional Reform Act of 2005, introduced by Tony Blair. This had a major effect. It basically withdrew judicial powers from the House of Lords where they were and it set up the new Supreme Courts, basically separating powers. So judicial independence is maintained in a number of ways. Firstly, you've got appointments. Now you have the Judicial Appointments Commission. The highest legal position previously was the Lord Chancellor, and they were chosen by the Prime Minister, and they actually sat in all three branches of government. The Lord Chancellor, in turn, made all legal, uh, major senior legal appointments, and they did this based on secret soundings. They basically went and met other judges. They were mostly male, upper middle class, Oxbridge educated judges, and this obviously produced a network of judges with a similar background uh, and was hardly representative, fair, or impartial. The introduction of this new Judicial Appointments Commission was a major step forward. It's a pa panel of independent uh, people who um, uh, and judges have to apply formally to get into that position. Um, the position of Lord Chancellor was reduced. Has it made a difference? Well, yes, we could argue it has, because according to the JAC, from 2011 to 43% of candidates recommended to senior judge posts were women, even though they make up only 19% of the eligible pool. The UK Supreme Court has its first very famous female president, Baroness Hale, and it also has three out of the 12 people serving, so three out of the 12 serving are women. Uh, the JAC removes the political tinge that was evident uh, from the role of the Lord Chancellor. The appointments process much fair based on merit. Though the Justice Minister can veto appointments, they're only limited to doing this with one nomination and only in exceptional circumstances. Recent high-profile cases such as Jane Miller have clearly went against the government. This shows Supreme Court asserting its independence. Well, you could argue as well, no critics would say that the UK Supreme Court only has three out of 12 positions. That's not representative. Only one in 20 judges in the UK is non-white. This compares to 12% ethnic minority population. So progress is slow. Only one in four are female compared to 50% of the population. And most appointments are still uh, white, upper middle class and Oxbridge educated. And the um, the Lord Chancellor still has a big position. They can still reject some uh, high case or high profile uh, appointments. So security of tenure is next. What is it? Well, it basically means that they can stay in their position until the age of 75 uh, without the threat of being removed. Senior judges can only be removed by an address from both Houses of Parliament. And this last happened in 1830. Junior justices are only um, there, or their security of tenure is there due to good behaviour and they can only be removed um, with a criminal offence. Uh, why is it important? Well, it just means that you cannot like, get rid of a judge based on a political or what's regarded as a political decision. Pay is also uh, safeguarded. Uh, obviously, they, they don't want to have their pay reduced for uh, a decision. So it actually comes from a consolidated fund um, and that's actually decided independently by a salary review board. It also has freedom from criticism. There's a convention that exists to prevent MPs and peers from criticising judicial rulings. These are called subjudice rules and they prevent comments on trials as they are being conducted because this prejudice is the case. All ministers are meant to um, abide by this. In practice, however, there have been breaches. So 2003, Home Secretary David Blunkett criticised the legal ruling allowing nine half-gone hijackers to walk free. Uh, Charles Clark criticised the release of suspected terrorists from Belmarsh Prison. And John Reid, um, he criticised uh, 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 the release of a murderer of Philip Lawrence, a, a London headmaster. Uh, it's also part of the independent legal profession. So judges are appointed from the ranks of lawyers. They are self-regulated by the law society and they're not trained by the state as elsewhere in Europe. 
We also have a reduced role of the, the Lord Chancellor has been discussed. So this role has been diminished entirely over the past few years. Since 2006, legal role was transferred to the Minister of Justice. Influence of her appointments is still there, but much reduced. The Chancellor has to take an oath upholding the independence of the judiciary. I hope this is useful. Um, look over it and see what you think.